check it out. Now, the last thing that we need to cover here on how to scale your direct consumer and e-commerce business is something we call a USP, a unique selling proposition. In the world of direct consumer, a lot of folks focus on discounting products. If I don't make a sale, I'm going to discount and retarget with that. Or I'm going to focus on Black Friday and running big discounts. There's a lot of reasons why that's a huge problem. But what we're going to cover today is the fact that price is a unique selling proposition you've already lost. Jeff Bezos basically won the price point battle. Walmart and Amazon own cheapest product. You cannot compete with cheapest product and expect to make more money unless you have the ability to sell millions of whatever it is that you're doing. Like, there's just not enough out there for you to win that battle. But your unique selling proposition gives you a tremendous opportunity to cover the ground that big brands do not cover. If you want to be a big brand, you kind of have to be everything to everybody. Very few big brands are extraordinarily specialized in what they do. Coca-Cola is soda, right? McDonald's is a burger and fries. Obviously, it's more complicated than that, but you get where I'm going. Nike is the trainer, is the sneaker for everybody, right? Here's the problem. Every one of those big brands that defines the marketplace that you can buy in retail stores, which again, retail stores are also competing on cost, and all of these big brands and retail stores inside a recession are just focusing on retaining their customers, retaining their market share. They're trying to not lose money because they have investors and shareholders, which means they're going to make, take less risks and make more efforts to do boring, middle of the road, safe decision-making at a greatest scale as they possibly can. And price is going to be their unique selling point. And they can lose more money in a year than you'll spend in the entire lifespan of your business just to make sure that you can't compete with them on price. You're never going to win. That's not David versus Goliath. That's David versus a hundred Goliaths. You cannot win that battle. What you can do is what ultimately the direct consumer marketplace and e-commerce is built on. You can focus on doing a better job. Why is that brand popular? What do they do? And when they be ultimately went from being a specialist to a generalist, Nike went from being the, like the shoe with the waffle to ultimately just being the kind of every sneaker. When you go from a specialist to a generalist, it means that there is room in the specialism for a lot of folks to succeed. This is where disruptive brands really come into play. When you see brands like Uber and Lyft, taxis were excellent. You, you need a ride, there it is. And, and that grew to the point where it became a commodity. And when it becomes a commodity, it ultimately means that somebody can do a better job. You know, taxis used to be really expensive and terrible service with people you couldn't trust. And now we had much better service with people that we kind of got to know, or at least be able to understand that like they were being vetted, and something that was cheaper. Now, price was a selling point there, and ultimately taxis have kind of competed with that as Uber and Lyft have just gotten more and more expensive. Price can be a great leverage in, but that was also in a booming economy, not a recession. But you can see a lot of disruptive brands ultimately do something better. Netflix did better than cable at giving you the content you wanted when you wanted it in a way that was easier for you. They basically took, cable was improved upon by TiVo and then Netflix basically took TiVo and made it on demand and expanded the entire breadth of what you could do. You need to figure out in your market, what is the thing that the big players do and how can you do a little piece of it a lot better? How can you do one side of their business much better than they can in a way where you can charge a little bit more money because you're providing a higher quality customer experience and service 
And then ultimately, as that brand moves away from product quality to protect cost and dumbs down their product to appeal to more folks during recession to maintain customer and market share, you can do a better job in one specific aspect of their business than they are, and you are going to steal market share from them. A recession is an amazing time to grow a business. There are going to be books written about the people that leaned into their unique selling proposition during this time. And there are going to be dead bodies on all sides of the road of people that have really bright ideas that tried to compete as David versus 100 Goliaths on price and lost to Amazon and the you know Walmarts of the world. If you want to really scale your business, you need to understand what is the hero product that I have that is unique to me that I can build a strong LTV from. If you can figure that little equation out, that is the number one most important thing for you. If you can figure that equation out, then it pretty much all just comes down to creative testing to attract more people to come into your store and buy from you at a more efficient rate so that you can improve the volume of those customers. And as you're improving the volume of those customers, you're going to be able to get a better set of data faster on understanding how to improve the conversion rate and the LTV and the second purchase rate and the AOV of those customer journeys. And the more and more you do that, the more and more money you're making, the more and more money you can spend in growing your business. And ultimately, the more and more you scale your business. Because scaling your business has nothing to do with spending more money. That is the ramification of doing everything else well. Scaling your business, the businesses that scale, find their unique proposition around a hero product that with a well-defined, stable, and scalable LTV that allows them to compete in the marketplace by leveraging a little corner of the world just for them. And some of those brands have ultimately grown to be huge. Disruptive brands become household names and ultimately kind of get watered down all the time. In the sneaker world, you had Skechers and New Balance. Those were kind of disruptive little edge pieces that have grown more and more market share. And we see now sneaker companies popping in all over the place, doing part of that job a lot better. You see it in fashion. You see it in consumer goods. You can see it in packaged goods. You see it in cars. You see it all over the place. Why was Tesla huge? Not only because Elon is, is a great personality, but also, it's tremendously helpful to have an electric car in a world of gas cars and make it available to somebody in a business model that might make it work for you. Now, if you're ungodly wealthy and you can handle that, that launch, that's great. But you don't need to be that. There are a million brands that are worth eight figures with a small team that are growing every year, doing one thing better than the biggest players in the market. And all you need is to be a little bit better than everybody else in one specific thing and build a business around acquiring customers that are willing to pay you a little bit more to get a product that's higher quality for themselves. And as the rest of the market cheapens their product to lower their price to maintain profitability, you can make higher quality customer journeys and ultimately steal the market share of their former customers who feel like that product just isn't good enough anymore. They don't make it like they used to. So you can make it like they used to or better. And that is going to be the foundation of your direct consumer e-commerce business. I've scaled a lot of businesses and pretty much every year for the last five or six years, I've taken a seven figure business and put it on a nine figure run rate. Every single one of them has done this thing very well. Recap. Find your unique selling proposition around a hero product and develop LTV around that customer journey and drop literally everything else that gets in the way of making that better. Everything else is a distraction and a liability to the scale that you deserve. You want to scale direct consumer e-commerce business, you have to learn how to be better than the people that don't care about their customers and find a way to turn that into future cash flow. If you like this, I love to know your feedback. Remember, sign up for the newsletter. If you want to really raise the LTV on your business and your life, you can find 
the Facebook Ads MBA program at Facebook, or sorry, mba.facebookinstructor.com, my unique selling prop. I'm the guy that's actually done it year after year, over and over and over again to the tune of billions in revenue. And I can show you literally every step along the way in a way that is scalable horizontally and vertically that reduces your stress and improves your success. My hero product is the Facebook Ads MBA program. And my LTV is based on the fact that, well, once you get that, there's a lot more other ancillary skills that Disruptor School can sell you. So with that being said, go out there, scale your business. You deserve it. And YouTube thinks you might like a couple of these videos. Don't be afraid to subscribe. And until next time, I'll see you on the internet. Bye.